Okay, mechanics paper and then one paper. Uh, June 2006, let's look at question 7. See how this goes. Now, vectors questions. Now, lots of people find vectors questions hard, but if you follow a few simple methods, then you can find out exactly what's going on quite in a quite straightforward manner, hopefully. So first of all, let's um, convert these to column vectors. I prefer column vectors. So let's find the velocity of the ship. Um, and in column form, it's minus 2.5 in the i direction and 6 in the j direction. While we're here, let's find the position vector r of s, and that's 16.5. We might or might need that yet. Okay, I, uh, part A, sorry, speed of S. Well, that's quite straightforward. The speed bit is usually not a problem. So we're just looking at the velocity vector, and it says to the left 2.5 and up 6. So let's just get a little sketch of this. If I started here, I'd go left 2.5 and up 6, just roughly, not to scale. And then that means that I can find the vertical, um, if this was the velocity vector, I can find it's the length of 2.5 to the left and the length of 6 up. So if we find the speed, we're just going to use Pythagoras. We know it's a right angle triangle because we're using i and j. So I can just do square root of 2.5 squared plus 6 squared is equal to root 42.25, which is um, 6.5 meters, you can just check that in your calculator. Oh, it's not meters, 6.5 kilometers per hour, or kmh minus 1. Okay, now to find the bearing, well, let's consider, first of all, we need an angle in here. So let's consider this angle theta. Now, because it's a right angle triangle, we can set up a tan theta, looking at 6 over 2.5, or theta is equal to tan minus 1 of 6 over 2.5. Now I can do that on my calculator, so theta comes out as a nice round, or not round, 67.380132 uh, degrees. But I am asked for the bearing, and this is something that often people get confused by. So because my vector Let's look at our north line. Because my vector definitely went 2 to the left and 6 up, minus 2.5, 6, uh, I, 6, J. I actually need to find this angle all the way around here. Bearings are measured in clockwise. So uh, three digits, and they always start from north. So to find the bearing, I need to, um, is equal to the answer I got, plus 270 degrees. So when I do that, that comes out as 337 degrees to the nearest degree. And that's good enough accuracy for this question. Usually three significant figures, but bearings we can do to 300 um, to nearest degree. Okay, so not that bad, not a bad start for four marks. Now we want to find the position vector of R. So I use this formula or a little equation and it's all lots of done in different ways. I like to think of that the final position uh, of a point or a or whatever it is we're talking about is equal to initial position where it starts plus uh, velocity times time or time times velocity. Basically, it's kind of common sense, but it's difficult. I would like to remember this. Where something ends up is where it starts, plus uh, how it's moving for how long it moves for. So for us, its final position, we want to find at, um, it's going to run into a rock. So basically, if we consider where the ship goes for three hours, that's, it would hit the rock. That will tell us where the rock is. So the position vector S at any time is where it starts, which is 16.5 plus th um, the time multiplied by how it's moving, which is minus 2.56. Or, that's at any time. For us, we want to consider 16.5 plus 
plus three, three hours after where it starts, after its initial position, which was midday, of minus 2.56. And this is where column vectors come into really useful. Read along the top, 16 minus 7.5 gives us 8.5 in the i, and 5 plus um, 18, which gives us 23 in the j direction. If you're not confident with the column vectors, you can just convert back, or you can convert back anyway. It is 8.5 i plus 23 j. Okay, so that's the final position vector. That's um, that's the final position vector if it travelled for three hours. So therefore, this is where the rock will be. Okay. Now we obviously don't want the ship to crash. So luckily, there's a tracking station, and um, they warn the captain what's happening. And the captain then does what he's doing for two hours until two o'clock, and then he changes course so he changes velocity. So let's work out where he was at 2 o'clock. So at 2 o'clock, the ship is then moved to. So it starts at the um, 16.5, and it's going to go for 2 hours on its minus 2.56 velocity, which gives us a rather nice um, 11.17. So this is where it's going to be at 2 o'clock. Now at 2 o'clock it changes its speed so we can create a new uh, position vector. And So it's final, like I said before, is its initial, which is now 2 o'clock, so from 2 o'clock onwards it's final is initial plus time times velocity. Okay, so the position vector of the ship after two o'clock is equal to where it starts at two, which is what we've just found, 1117, plus time multiplied its new velocity, and it's going five kilometers per hour north. No I component, five straight up. This is the expression for it's going to, how it's gonna travel up from two o'clock onwards forevermore, unless it changes its speed again. Now, E, we want to find the time when S will be due east of R. So let's remind ourselves of the position vector of the rock. The position vector of the rock was 8.523, and we want to find out where it is due east of this. Now, for something to be due east, that means that the J component will be equal. Now you might have to have a little think about that. For something to be due east or west of each other, the height, the vertical component must be the same. They may not be in the same place exactly, they're going to be left or right of each other, but they're going to have the same vertical component, they're going to be the same height away from the x or i axis. So all we do we have to create an expression. So if we look along the j components for the ship, that's 17 plus 5t is going to be the same as the j component 23 there. So rearranging this, 5t is equal to 6, or t is equal to 1.2 if you want to use your calculator. So 1.2 hours, which actually gives us um, 1 hour 12 minutes. So a fifth, or 0 0.2 of an hour, is 12 minutes, which is 1 hour 12 minutes, which is actually at um, one hour after the two o'clock, which is at 15.12 in the 24 hour clock, okay? So the due east is when we're gonna have the vertical components of these things are gonna be the same, okay? One last part of the question to do, there's a nice three mark question here. So let's find the distance S from R at the time 1600. Well, let's work out where the ship is at 1600. T is two, not four, because remember our position vector, well, of the ship works for from two o'clock onwards. So two hours after two gives us four o'clock. So the position vector is equal to where it was at two plus how it's moving from two, which is not five, which our position vector is going to be 11 plus, well, it's going to be 11, 17 plus two lots of not five. So the position vector is equal to this. 
it's going to be 11, which was 2 dots, not that. 17 plus 10 is 27. So at 4 o'clock, the ship is at that point. The position vector of the rock, which doesn't move, just remains the same at 8.523. Look back into your other working. Now we're to find the distance, how these are apart. Well, let's think, just a little sketch is going to help us work out what's going on here. So if we just pretend the origin's here, the rock is 8.5 along, 23 up, somewhere here. This is the rock. And if we consider the ship at 4 o'clock, it's 11 along, so a bit further to the right, and, oh, further up. So let's just adjust the position of the rock. Let's bring it down. Now, the ship is further to the right, and it's further up. So the ship is actually at this point here. Now, if I just consider, I want to find the distance, this distance between the ship and the rock. Now, to do that, I'm going to consider the horizontal difference and the vertical distance between the ships. This is a nice right angle triangle, and this here is the distance between them. So a little bit of common sense tells us that uh, the horizontal separation, okay, um, the vector d to get from the rock to the ship, if we use the vector d to get from rock to ship, um, I'm going to have to go, well, I'm going to have to go across some and up some. How many across? Well, I've got to go from 8.5 to 11, which is 2.5 across, and I'm going to have to go from 23 to 27 up. So I'm going to have to go 4 up. So the horizontal difference between them is 2.5 across and 4 up, and I can just do that. I could easily do a takeaway, these things, whichever way around. So to work out the magnitude of distance, or the length of that vector, how far they're actually apart, all I have to do is use some Pythagoras of 2.5 squared plus 4 squared, which is the root of... 22.25, which comes out as not a very nice number, 4.71699566, which is approximately equal to 4.72 kilometers to 3SF. Let me just recap here. Worked out where the ship was at 4 o'clock. We know where the rock is, it's always in the same place. And then we just work out how far how far apart they are in the horizontal, 2.5, how far they are in the vertical, which is 4, by comparing the vectors. And then I use Pythagoras to help me find the distance between those two things. Okay. And that leaves us for a nice vectors question. Very nice standard question. Lots of uh, really interesting math going on there. Uh, stop it, pause it, go back and watch it if you're finding that tough.